Well, hi, everybody. This is Paul Feuerstein, the Editor-in-Chief of Dentistry Today. And I'm here today with an old friend, and I don't mean old in age, an old friend, Dr. Pat Cassidy. Pat is the founder and CEO of Net32. And if you don't know what Net32 is, we're going to let you know a little bit more about Net32. But it's an amazing company. But I want to go back in time, Pat. So we met, God, over 20 years ago somewhere. And uh, you were a GP dentist, and you were starting a private practice and moving some things, moving some uh, pieces around, and uh, you had an amazing success story. And part of your success story is the way you've built the practices, and you wrote an article for us in the March issue of Dentistry Today. And uh, let me just grab it for a second so people can see what we're looking at here. If we can get this up on the screen. The downside of clinical rapport. And basically, what you've done is explain to the dentists of the world um, what they're doing, and what not that they're doing wrong, but what they should be doing to get patient rapport. So before we even get into the details, tell us a little bit about you and the practice journey and where you started in Canada, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, thank you, Paul. And I'm so happy to be here with you and uh, share some thoughts that I've had over the years. I've had a clinical experience in Canada, Vancouver in, in particular, I was a traveling dentist for a couple of years, and then we moved to North Carolina, and I had the thought that it would be a great thing if I could build a group practice, and I learned as much as I could along the way and had some success and some luck and ultimately ended up with the practice at probably 1% in the 1% uh, percentile uh, for the practice and ultimately sold the practice to the largest TSO in the country, who you probably know who that is, everybody does. And to just put a, uh, an exclamation mark on it, and sitting down with the, the president of that company uh, here in North Carolina and talking about the, the sale, uh, he reached over to me and he said, you know, Pat, in order to have the profitability and the success of this kind of a practice, group practice, single location, other people would need three times the staff. And that kind of shocked me. I was like, are you kidding? I just built it over the years, did my best, and uh, apparently ended up with something was that was better than I thought, <laughs> ultimately. So, yeah, that was an awesome transaction. So, so in, in, the, in the crux of the article, it's called The Downside of Clinical Report. You touch on the fact that even, even the greatest clinicians around can fail the business, have, have a business failure. And I think your point, and we'll, we'll, let's discuss this, was the dentists are of, often cr are focusing on what we call clinical rapport as opposed to perhaps patient rapport. And all it takes is a couple of minutes of preparation to before the patient even sits in the chair to learn a little bit about the patient. This goes, and you can explain your, your format, but when, like if a new patient comes in, the typical dentist, and I'm, I'm not picking on anybody, is that walks and says, hi, how long has that tooth been bothering you? Uh, you know, um, wh what's been going on? Instead of saying, hey, congratulations, I understand you had a new baby, or, uh, um, you know, I understand you're working with a company that, that's developing a new vaccine or something like that. So explain this this whole pathway for the dentist to do things like that, to make this practice really marketable, let's let's just say. Yeah, nice summary. Uh, I think it gets back to dental school when the focus is so clinical. You think clinical is all there is in dentistry and uh, young folks get out there and they may ha not have any business acumen and they're, they're so focused on clinical that they think that that's all there is. And in order to build a great practice, it doesn't matter how small or how large it is, there has to be that rapport, not just the clinical rapport, which is uh, in making sure that the patient understands all the options and that you go over all those options and you get some confidence in, in, the, in the patient with regard to the treatment itself. But there's a whole other part of that uh, patient rapport that can really boost your practice if you focus on it and the intention is to establish a great personal connection with every patient. And it, there's no cost, there's no gimmicks, there's no nothing to it other than intention to connect with your patients at every level in the practice. 
from the time they make their phone call to they show they show up at the front desk, they're taken to an operatory, and all the way we're, we're trying to gather little personal tidbits like their you know they had they like dogs. It can even be the the weather. That's always a good opener. But to walk into an operatory for with a new patient in particular and start with clinical is, in my opinion, strong opinion, a big mistake. There should be some attempt to establish a personal connection. And when you do that, that's what really is magic. And you combine that with clinical rapport. It's, it's important to do excellent dentistry. It's important to explain all the details of the clinical treatment. But at the same time, we're trying to connect. And when you connect, it's just magical through the practice. Um, it, it just makes everything, everything runs smoother. The culture of the practice is elevated. The team is motivated. And the, the net result is that you get a lot of reviews where they, the patient will write something more about the experience in the practice rather than the great clinical care that they provide. Uh, customers come in, they expect great clinical care. It's, a, it's a, a given. And if you want to distinguish yourself from other practices, you need to do different things. And I found the most effective thing is to establish that personal rapport with the patient. And there's certain ways that we can be sure that it happens. Well, let me say, I mean, what, what you've told me is it's it's not just you, it's a team approach. I mean, the assistant can get, get some information and the front desk can get some information. So before you walk in the room, doc, heads up, ABC. And and that's a piece of the puzzle. And they and it also follows through with the with the staff, the, the, the assistants, the hygienists, the front desk staff, the laboratory people, whatever it is, anybody who's interacting with the patient shouldn't just say, How how is your filling? You know, it's it's more, you know, oh, you know, have a great day or, or something, something much more personal. And you don't have to get too into it. I mean, it doesn't have to be la di da, but just just the idea that you have more of an interest in the person than the clinical. And and then in terms of referrals, you you said to me that you kind of said this to me. Nobody goes home and says, you know, the margins of my crown are unbelievable. <laughs> They're gonna <laughs> say, Dr. Pat was the nicest guy, or the assistant was just as a sweetheart. That's what's gonna get your practice to build. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head. And writing down little personal notes and then bringing them up at the next appointment for the patient, you know, it's a little corny that uh, you know, how could that, how could the dentist remember all this stuff? As corny as it might be, it's very effective in establishing that ongoing communication, ongoing rapport with patients. Oh, and and and. And you don't have to be, you know, I guess it doesn't have to be in their face. It's just just casually, but it's just the idea that you're more interested in that whole person versus that one tooth, you know. And then, of course, and then, but you did hit on the, you know, the thing you hit on the head is you still have to be a decent clinician to make this work, too. I mean, you have to still hone your clinical skills so that, quote, clinical rapport is critical, but it has to be a blend. But, but what you've infused to me is it's not just you. Your personality, it's everybody's. That's the whole, the whole, it's the whole, everybody's in, everybody's invested in the patients. That's how I see Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And, and then what, what we found was, and after going into operatories unprepared, either only with clinical knowledge that you end up sticking your foot in your mouth uh, all too often. And, and uh, you don't know that somebody lost their, their dog that morning. You don't know that somebody died in the family and you walk into an operatory, a new patient, and you know that's pretty awkward. And I, I know everybody that's listening to this has run into that situation, probably more for the uh, hygienist and the dental assistants that, oh my God, he just walked right by me, went into the operatory and started to talk clinical with uh, the patient. Probably the worst thing you can do in, in order to establish rapport. Well, we've all been there. I can, and we, just a few weeks ago, I have patients for the long-term patient. I walk in the room and say, hey, how you doing? It's a burst into tears because his wife had passed away the week before. I didn't know it. It's like, how stupid did I feel? You know, and and I mean, you know, it's, I, I can't say it was my own fault, but everybody's had that situation where you say something and they go, oh, uh, mm -hmm. so, so you can't be perfect, but at least show the, so of course I said, oh my God, what happened? You know, it was just, 
uh, we're all, we're all, we, we, I mean, this is the, we're talking. Everybody has the same situations, but it's a way to 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 twist to turn it to a positive from the negative, or not, or like you're saying, don't even let that happen if you can get away with it. I think that's really great. Yeah, and and it has to be the doctor, the leader of the business, the leader of the clinical practice, to set the tone that that's what's necessary. And for us, we operationalized it where we would not go into an operatory no matter what the procedure is going to be. It could be a crown seat. It could be the simplest things. Hygiene, of course, hygiene checks. Um, if a dental assistant or hygienist came to me and, and uh, I say, tell me something interesting about this patient. They have nothing to say. The patient didn't say anything to me. Then I say, get back in there and establish some rapport. And so the doctor needs to lead. And when the doctor leads, it just goes through like any business structure. The leader is going to set the tone, is going to set the culture. And you have an opportunity to have your staff really excited about the patients as human beings as personal and when i'm seeing uh, 120 130 patients in our practice and down the street they're seeing 20 or 30 there's a reason for that and i think a big part of it is the way that we established an, a rapport amongst one another the team rapport as well as the personal rapport never forgetting about the quality of care quality of care is tantamount but if you really want to build a practice that feeling that you want that feeling to be wonderful for the patient across the whole experience in the practice. Great. So, so now that we've gone through how to be a superstar, then you, Pat, sat down and you, as a dentist and it was working, you ordered equipment, you ordered supplies, and you got frustrated with what you were seeing. So you thought for a while and said, there must be a better way. And this is how many years ago did we start the Net32? Yeah, uh, 25 plus years ago, back oh. in 1996, to be exact, and incorporated in 97. This is pre-Amazon, pre-eBay, pre-everything, I'd have to say. And you were really uh, on the cutting edge there. So so I, I guess, what sparked your interest in the first place? I mean, I've, obviously being a practitioner, but what, what gave you this brainstorm of, of doing Actually, what, in fact, before I even say that, why don't you explain a little bit of what the, the core of Net32 is? The core of Net32 is comparison shopping with the same OEM products, genuine products. And we found that whether we were in Canada or in North Carolina, that there's a huge discrepancy in pricing for the same products, the exact same products. Why is one company selling for 40% less than others? Typically, those would be the, the smaller regional distributors as opposed to the, the the largest ones in the country. So we thought at that time, my wife and I, that if we could get all that information into a digital form and compare vendors and manufacturers pricing against one another, that it would benefit and save practices a, a lot of money. That was the core thought, but it was very painful going forward because technology wasn't there. It was dial up. Uh, few dental practices had computers, let alone uh, the web. So we we uh, we had to struggle for many years, but we kept the faith. Uh, there was a dentist who said, "KTF, keep the faith," and we believed that it would get better. And technology uplifted us; it got better, and we got better, and we built a better product to the point now where we're perfecting the customer experience and trying to get it to the point where it's effortless, very similar to Amazon. And that's what we've been doing in the most recent years is just perfecting the customer experience so that they refer. And you know now we see 800 new practices or so every, every month. And we have tens of thousands of customers that are using us on a monthly basis. And I, I, it's it's remarkable to me, and it's so gratifying that we've been able to do a small part to help dentists throughout the entire country. And and you know, and it's as simple as just going on to the website of net32.com and signing on, and just look around and say, "I need cotton rolls. I need this. I need that. I need some restorative materials, whatever they are." And I don't have to go and make sixteen calls, go through sixteen websites to figure it out. You're doing all the running around 
warming. The old day, the yellow pages used to say, "Let the let your fingers do the walking. Let, let you know, let let the <laughs> pages do the walking." So you'll let Net Thirty Two do the shopping for you. And uh, I have to say, and we've we've spoken about this before. Uh, just tell everyone how much do you think that all of your or, uh, people who work with Net Thirty Two have saved over the time you've been working there. <laughs> well, I, I checked the number, and it's nine hundred and twenty million dollars uh, collectively that have been saved for dental practices, and that at the rate we're going, it's likely that we'll hit a billion dollars saved uh, before the end of this year. I did check my numbers, and it looks like we're on a track to to hit that, which is incredibly gratifying. And with the features that we've d we've created. Because it's business to business, dentists are buying the same things over and over and over again. So re repurchasing, we've made that very easy by writing algorithms that predict when they're going to need something. And that's all listed on a page at the, the most urgent product to buy is at the top of the page and it goes down. So it's a common way where our customers uh, find what's needed without having to look in cupboards so much. It's, I mean that's great, and and uh, you know I, I just it's it's there was probably some controversy as you were growing through this whole thing, and you people were yelling at you and saying hey, you can't do this and you shouldn't do this, but but that's the the world is different now. I mean it's, this is the way things work. This is the way it works. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's, it's we like, we're it's disruptive. Fun. Yeah, we're, that well, that's the word. It's, it's, it was disruptive. Now it's not really disruptive. It's just it is what it is. And and so here's the question of the year. Where, where are we going for the next five years? <laughs> well, with B2B and with this kind of marketplace, it really lends itself towards using AI. We always we already use machine learning, but to integrate AI to the point where the shopping and the inventory and the management is just flawless is our goal. And that's what we're going to focus on. And always the customers, we're listening to the customers all the time. They're sending ideas about what they think would improve the, the experience, the shopping experience. So just keeping an eye on what they're interested in and using our technology to the max to make, the, make it so easy to purchase and repurchase. And even we have things like uh, auto order, set it and you forget it. Every two weeks you get so many cavi wipes or whatever, and that just happens. And you're informed the day before, here's your order, this is what you needed, and do you still need it? Yes, no, and uh, away you go. So that's the kind of thing that we'll continue to focus on to uplift dental practices and just make it so easy uh, to purchase and repurchase. Well, Pat, I mean, this is, I mean, I've been with you for this journey. I've been watching this, as you know, you know, since we met whenever, when we were little kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <a> different color. <laughs> I still have it, though. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so, so I mean, my, my, the word to the, the word to the wise out here is, A, read my, read Pat's article in the March issue of Dentistry Today. That's a number one. And number two is if you haven't done it before, just go to net32.com, check it out and see what's going on. Um, I think you'll be pretty impressed. And Pat, always a pleasure seeing you. And uh, it's been a great run and, uh, and, and I hope it continues. <laughs> Thank you so much, Paul. I really appreciate it. We're doing our best every day to improve it. Thanks a lot. Thank you.